Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And we have another beautiful kind of warm day before the temps start to drop and we get a whole bunch more rain coming. So today I'm gonna use that time and I'm gonna prep a bed to plant all of my ranunculus and anemone corms. I can't wait to show you how well they have sprouted and show you the whole process of getting them into your garden beds. Now this is one of my raised beds in the back. This had tithonia in it. You can see the massive plants in there um, earlier this year. The soil level has dropped dramatically and so it does need to be topped off with more soil. Over here on the left, I have all my lisianthus uh, plants that are looking really good. I have some over here and then I have some here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna transplant the lisianthus plants over here to the left. And then I'm gonna be utilizing most of this bed for the ranunculus and anemone corms. So let's just start with a good clean out, add in some soil, and then let's talk about how we go about planting those corms. Okay, that was super easy. The soil is moist, happy. I was happy to see lots of worms in here because this is this planter is new as of last year, this raised bed is. And so I was really happy to see a lot of worms in here, nourishing everything. I removed a couple of lines of snapdragons because these are all snapdragons. And I actually have a video coming up um, in a week or so that'll be about pruning these back, planting up some new snapdragons and also pruning my roses. But I decided to move all my lisianthus into one area. Lisianthus do act as a perennial in my area sometimes. I do stress sometimes because it really just depends on your um, particular kind of microclimate. And they do do well in my area. So I did not start any new lisianthus this year. And actually about half of these I grew from seed and half of these I grew from plugs. All of the itty bitty ones, the smaller ones, those are the ones I grew from seed and um, all the ones that are larger are the ones I grew from plugs that I purchased from Covington's Nursery. And um, yeah, I'm really hoping for a good show. I did disturb a lot of roots, so in the Lysianthus do not like their roots to be disturbed, but <laughs> I hope they'll settle in all right um, and give me a good show for this year. I got maybe a dozen blooms from them last year, so I do hope that they'll build and build each year. So now we've got this bed cleaned up and you can see how far the soil levels dropped like it's literally dropped four or five inches so i'm going to go grab a couple of bags of raised bed soil and we're going to get this filled up and we're going to get started on planting those ranunculus and anemones i will say while i was cleaning this out i had anemones in here last year and this anemone overwintered that's kind of amazing I didn't know, I mean, I've heard people say that you plant out anemones in our area. You can do that and then overwinter them. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of shocked. Now there are some other just ones in here that are also all rotted. That's the only good one I found. But interesting, maybe we'll just leave all of our anemone and ranunculus in here. <laughs> Probably not. The problem is, is they typically will rot out, but they'll die back really bad during the, um, w uh, during the summer. So that's typically when I come in, pull them all out of this bed, and then go ahead and bring them in and make them go dormant during the heat of the summer, and then get the whole process started again. But perhaps maybe this next year, I'll get the whole process started again in fall and get them out into the beds before winter starts and put hoops on them. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, so since this bed already had a ton of compost that I added last year, um, I'm just gonna put a heavy dose of plant tone fertilizer in here, mix it into the first couple inches of the soil. Looks good. 
and this particular fertilizer is a time release fertilizer you don't have to use only plant tone there are so many good ones out there this is the one I just happened to grab this year. I am hoping to experiment a little bit more with some different types of varieties of fertilizer. Just so I can make my own decisions about some things, I think would be really nice. But I haven't had a bad experience with um, plant tone. I think it's a good fertilizer. I'm just always interested, is there something better? <laughs> That'll make my flowers even bigger. Okay, let's take a look at the ranunculus. Okay, as you probably remember, I'll go ahead and link my pre-sprouting video, but um, I pre-sprouted a bunch of varieties of ranunculus and anemone. The ranunculus are doing really good. Um, I can see green shoots coming up, and a lot of them look awesome. I'm not gonna lie, I've already mixed some of them up. <laughs> the anemones, however, not so great. Um, a lot of them rotted, so, I'm actually thinking in the future, um, some of the anemones, see they have, um, they have the green and it's looking really good, but some of the anemones look like this, totally got a lot of fungus on them, still have a little bit trying to come up. So I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna see which looks good and keep those and I'll show you what the end result is. Okay, so here are the ones that have some kind of um, root system growing on them. And some of them definitely already have stuff coming up, which look good, are the anemones. And then these are the ones that are molded. I think next year it'd be smart to not put them all in the same container. I think I'm gonna put the anemones in a different container from their ranunculus and kind of control their moisture a little bit because I will say either some of them are perfect some of them are molded or some of them are completely dry. So weird. So I think that in the future, I would like to spread my anemones out in a larger tray, just them, and then have a, be a little bit more focused on the amount of moisture that they're getting. But we're gonna go ahead and take all of these out to the garden. Um, we're going to start by planting ranunculus and then we're gonna come back and plant anemones. And I'll pop up the varieties that I'm growing this year as I'm planting them. We're gonna be planting them about two inches deep in a nice fertile soil with really great drainage and they do need full sun. We are planting these about six inches apart. Most of the time they call for nine inches. I don't have enough space for that. So we're gonna go six inches and see how they do. And I'm just starting by spreading them all out and then I'll start tucking them down into the soil. I'm tossing out any that I feel like are moldy looking. So far I've found three out of about 20. And like I said, just two inches deep with the octopus and tentacles pointing down. Okay, the next, um, that first variety was Tomer Pickety. This next variety is Tomer White. Next is Tomer Purple. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually a little worried so many of them did it really well. I don't, I don't have a lot of room. I'm gonna probably have to go over to another bed, I think. I didn't have this good of luck last year, so I didn't prepare for this good of luck this year. Yes, it's a good problem to have. One thing about I, that I love about ranunculus corms is I can pull these up at the end of the season and plant sunflowers here, zinnias here, some quick growing flowers here. That works really great. Okay, the next varieties are Tomer Pink and Tecalode Salmon. I'm actually just gonna dump the whole thing out, mix these up.
Okay, so I have five varieties in here. So now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest. <laughs> Okay, well in all honesty, that ended up being an all over the place project. So I ended up having a whole lot more ranunculus actually sprout correctly than I have in the past. Looks like I missed that guy right there. Um, so <laughs> I guess that's a great problem to have. So this bed is full of ranunculus. And then I ended up planting up anemones in this container anemones in this container, ranunculus in this container, and ranunculus in that container. And these long containers are actually moving to a new location later. But so, I mean, I ended up having containers with anemones and ranunculus, which is great because actually I have a lot of subscribers who do um, container planning only. So uh, container gardening only. So this will be a really good um, experiment and I'll let y'all know how that goes. You do, if you have these containers, you need to make sure that they're very well drained um, as the ranunculus and the anemones can rot. So keep that in mind if you do decide to plant them in the containers. Okay, <laughs> that went better than expected on the amount that actually sprouted. Um, there's no way I should be buying any kind of ranunculus next year unless it's a very specific variety. Um, in fact, I'll probably need to give a bunch of these ranunculus away at the end of the season. I'll probably have to give some away to my neighbors um, because they're all going to get bigger. I'm going to get more off of them and there I don't have enough room. So I really think a better plan for me next year is to just be like, hey, I want however many number of corms from this particular variety save those for myself and pass along all the other ones um, this year I didn't do that because I didn't I haven't had good results this is the third year pre-sprouting ranunculus and I haven't had great results in the past so it did not even occur to me that all of them pretty much all of them would um, end up sprouting which is great so yeah I'll have to plan better for next year all right you all I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and getting this ranunculus and these anemone um, into the ground very excited we'll see how they do in the raised beds and then we'll see how they do in the containers that'll be a really great experiment to see how they do in my zone 8a in both of those different type of areas and I'll probably place the containers in different points throughout the backyard instead of all in the same place just to play a little bit like hey what's it look like with full sun but a little bit of shade in the afternoon hey what's it look like with uh, sun all day long you know I'll probably move around and see what we can do with them okay as always make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up and check me out on my social media pages TikTok, Facebook and Instagram as always she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be thanks y'all